My name is Stephen Goldfarb and I'm a physicist from the University of Michigan. So I'm David Barney. I'm a physicist for the CMS experiment. I work for CERN. Well, I'm working on the ATLAS experiment on the Large Hadron Collider. Speaking of which, you might have noticed it. It's behind my back. Yeah. I've been working for CMS now for 19 years. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Is that, is that that, which one is it? Is it that, is it that right massive here. disc the size of a cathedral? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can just, just around there, you can, you can sort of make it out. The thing we got asked the most about yeah. was people wanted to know a little bit about the computing power and how you compute all the data coming out of this detector. So at the moment, uh, when we have the, the proton collisions happening, we can create up to a, nearly a billion collisions every second. Uh, and we take a snapshot of what's going on about 40, 40 million times a second. We're beyond giga, right? Okay, tera, peta, we're in a petabytes, okay? So, so this, this thing here, all of the, each one of these tubes gives us some data. When, at the end of the day, well actually, at every 30 million times a second, this guy gives us about a, a, a petabyte of data. So about a petabyte of data comes out per second, a petabyte. Now we can't possibly store all of those snapshots uh, in any n known uh, storage medium. So what we have to do is we have to decide very quickly whether one of these snapshots is interesting and one of them's rubbish and we can just throw it away. So what happens, uh, you know, a petabyte of data comes out, it goes down these cables here, it goes all the way out, it goes downstairs, and it goes into this, this room that's full of electronics. The electronics brings it all in and then it filters it. It makes very fast decisions and says, I, I like that, I don't like that. And it throws away the vast majority of it. So when we're all done, at the end of the day, instead of taking uh, 30 million per second, we keep a few hundred events per second. That's still petabytes per year. What we can actually store for further analysis is only about 100 of these snapshots every second. So we have a very complex system uh, called the trigger that tries to decide very quickly whether the thing's interesting or not. And it has two levels. The first level is based on electronics, hardware, that takes a global view of the whole uh, detector information and tries to say very quickly, yes, this is good, this is bad. And it takes the rate down from 40 million a second down to about 100,000 a second. Then all of the data from those 100,000 go to a farm of computers. We call it a farm because it looks like it's just one computer after another. And that farm of computers analyzes in detail what happened in this collision, tries to find the most interesting ones, and then stores about between 100 and 300 of those really interesting snapshots for further analysis. And that further analysis can be done anywhere in the world through a distributed, very powerful computer system called the grid. How do you guys know you're not throwing away good stuff? Because you're throwing away so much. Oh, yeah. You know, well, actually, some of the data that we keep uh, is just random. So we have, a, we have a, what we call a trigger menu, all the things that we would like to have for breakfast, OK? So we have this whole menu there, and we say, OK, I want the Higgs on a supersymmetry. I know what that might look like, what that might look like. We go down that whole menu, and we pull out the events that, that would fit that. But then we also have something which says, just grab some at random, grab some at random. And we call that our minimum bias sample. So we always can check our efficiencies and we can check to see if we missed something. When you say a snapshot, what do you mean by a snapshot? And is this like, you know, four or five megabytes, like a photo right. I take of my camera? How big is a snapshot? So the CMS detector, if you like, is, is a 75 megapixel camera. So my iPhone has five megapixels, so 75 doesn't really sound very impressive. The difference is we take 40 million a second. But most of the information, uh, most of these detector elements are actually empty. There's nothing there because we don't get a particle going through every single part of the detector at once. So in fact, each of these snapshots eventually is down to a level of about a megabyte. So one megabyte is what we actually store per snapshot. Even that in itself, to try and store 100 megabytes or 300 megabytes per second, is a massive deal. It's like filling a CD every couple of seconds. Look what it sounds like, it looks like. It's noisy. It's, it's like if you've been on a, a, on a ship, on a, 
you know, across across the English Channel or something, and you're you're on you're on the the hum of the engines constantly. The Hadron calorimeter, and then within that, you've got the the inner detector and the pipe itself. So literally, it's, it's deep within that is where all where it's all going on, where it's all kicking off.